Away from that issue to another one, the issue of making states work. This was the focus of the 11th annual lecture of the firm of ALEX legal practitioners and arbitrators. The firm constituted a formidable panel to do justice to the issue. Discussions were moderated by the former governor of Cross River State. There is increasingly a disconnect between the governed and the government. And that's, I think, the crux and the thrust of our discussion today. The members of the panel took turns to share their ideas on how the states got into the situation where they were no longer viable. We have to compete in leadership. We have to admit it is our problem. The quality of the leadership is low. And we have to accept that they're incompetent. If a guy runs a state where he has not paid salary for six months and run around all over the place, asking his excellence, is incompetent. Period. There's no thing in the market. 60 to 70 percent of what we question today about corruption is actually the civil service. And the civil service. Without them, they won't be. Everything that I found wrong while I was in office was the civil service. For example, in cost in schools, we looked at our school system, saw the amount of money we were spending. It was huge. And it's still happening in most states today. But we're not getting any results. So what we did was to go to the school. They with the teachers, they with the students. I go to ask the students, what do you want? Oh, we want this, we want this. Principal, what do you want? And everything. Okay, we're going to do it. We'll give you the money direct. For when we wrote World Bank to, to do a project in Anambra State, they want to do something. And I said to them, unless the money is going to go from the bank direct to school. They said, no. I said, no, no, no. If it's not, don't bring it into the government. Because by the time he leaves us to the school, something is going to shock. So to, it, I want you to go direct to them, whatever. So I think the custom, the, the, so what I think is, they need to improve a the government system, where it is going to be. Uh, there's so many things you won't believe. It. Let me say something like that. that even headed paper. The first time I started the headed paper, which I was buying in my office, 750 naira, they gave me a bill of 15,000. I said, headed paper. They said, oh, you just started, you need a new headed paper with your name on it. I said, okay. You know, he said, so you can't bring it. They said, it used to be 18, that they've lowered it. So I said, okay, no problem. So when they left, I collected the sample of what they gave me, gave to my printer, and told him, if you can print this thing, and bring it next year. By the time they came back to me, I gave it to them and said, okay, pay him 1,005. And I treated it. But so the procurement system is, is not acceptable. <laughs> so if you can use it to shut it down and then think, do more. Any state that does not have, any governor rather, that does not have before he was elected, not at the point he was elected, and at least be thinking about it two years before he was elected, a four-year plan to attract investment into that state, to unleash the power of the talents of that state, to generate funding for the necessary basic infrastructure that allows a state function as uh, uh, a viable uh, uh, entity doesn't deserve to be in office. And the problem, of course, is that our electoral system does not allow for that type of planning. That's what you were, that's what you were saying. And so, as opposed to electing people who come to us and tell us, this is my vision for my state, this is how it's going to work, this is how it's going to fund it, and so on, okay? The guy has to get into an electoral system where, well, I mean, I guess uh, two, two former governors can best describe, describe how it works, but you have to navigate and go under and deal with the godfather or godmother and this and that and so on and then eventually you pass through as well. Now this is such such a dampener 
on the development uh, uh, opportunity. But when you get this FAC allocation, 20 billion or whatever it is, right, and you come to the state and all you've done is basically, right, create conditions where other states come, consume it, okay, to the benefit of their own environment. What have you done? What type of development is there? If every state is borrowing, I mean, I, I looked at the debt figures of states between 2013 and 2015, with about six exceptions, every, the, the debt of every state has grown by over 70%. And some states, um, a particular state, its debt grew by over 800% in two years. Now, that is entirely unsustainable. The states are finished. How do we get a mechanism for governing their fiscal responsibility? Based on what we have looked at so far, there are a few things that we have seen in Lagos State that we feel that some other states in Nigeria can actually emulate. In the area of revenue and in the area of expenses, with respect to revenue, Lagos State has tried to widen the uh, tax net. On the other side is that Lagos State has explored the area of PPP, private, part, uh, private uh, public partnership, in the area of wage disposal, for instance in the area of water supply and even in the area of the construction of roads and things like that. Okay. So some of these things have helped the state that in spite of the fact that the state has, at the moment, Lagos State has more than some percent of revenue from IGA. But in spite of that, the state has been able to achieve much through the use of PPP. The discussions were very interactive and at the end, the panel members gave their suggestions for making the states work. To have a, a properly articulated plan that is deliverable, you know, very simple. You don't need to go into doing things that are sophisticated. You can't come and say you want to build an airport because you know it's expensive. Where are you going to get 20 billion to do that for most states when they can't even do the basic things? There must be consequences for our actions. Um, we must develop a system, right, where we are held accountable for the things that we get to do. Um, and accountability cannot be an aberration. It cannot be a government comes in and wants instituted. It must be a norm in our society. We're not trying to create uh, a mass movement. Our primary business is practicing law. This is what you might call you know, CSR, you know, social responsibility. So we do it every year and uh, we hope that somehow it will get pro propagated not necessarily by us, but by others who might pick up the baton and continue the race.